Hi everyone, welcome to the Half-Life episode. This is episode 13. It is part of a series, so if you haven't watched episode 10, 11, and 12, please stop right now and go back and do so. Okay, Half-Life is so fun, especially if you're a math person or if you're a visual person, so that pretty much includes everybody. Um, I'll show you what I mean in just a second, though. So in our last episode, before I get into Half-Life, we talked about two different things. The first thing we talked about were rate laws, and so rate laws relate the concentration of the reactants to the reaction rate at any given moment in time. So for the most part, we determined that if your concentration went up, so there were more particles within your beaker or your flask, wherever you're doing your, rea your reaction, that meant that your reaction rate also went up. The only time that didn't happen is when we were looking at something that was zero order, because that meant that that reactant is not involved in the uh, rate. Okay. Now the second thing we can talk about is an integrated rate law. So we do a little bit of calculus and we end up with integrated rate laws, which allow us to predict how long a reaction will take or how much of, a, of the reactant remains after a certain amount of time. Um, so these were two really important things because the time feature is something we've never been able to do in general chemistry yet. Okay. So this is the first time in almost nine months where we can actually include a time um, piece in our equations. So the red one there is for zero order. Um, so you can see that on our left side here we're just looking at that concentration so this is zero order uh, the one here in the middle is for first order we can tell that because we're looking at the natural log and then our second order here is one over a or the inverse of our reactant concentration so these are the three equations you need to know and I'm now seeing a typo that's plus okay so plus kt all right so now um, we're going to talk about half-life and half-life is something that specifically happens when you have gone down from a hundred percent down to 50% of your reactants. So you've lost 50% of your material. So here what we've got is we're going to define half-life is the amount of time it takes for one half of your starting material to react away. So it is actually a time component. It's going to have a unit of seconds or meters or hours, something like that. So after one half-life, one, your new concentration is going to be half that. So you're going to take your initial concentration and divide it by two, right? That shouldn't be surprising. If we want to know how long it takes to lose half your concentration, you got to figure out what your new concentration would be. So for example, um, let's say that we have 100 grams of something. My first half-life is going to be the amount of time it takes to go from 100 grams to 50 grams. My second half-life is going to be the amount of time it takes to go from 50 grams to 25 grams. The third half-life is going to be then, uh, where am I at, 25 grams down to 12.5 grams. Okay, so you're going to sequentially see this loss of 50% of that current amount. So then the amount of time that it actually takes, that half-life, is represented by T1 half. So anytime you see T1 half, that means we're specifically asking for the amount of time it takes to lose 50% of your concentration. So now the amount of reactant remaining after N have lives, so that you don't have to constantly go like 100 divided by 2, divided by 2, divided by 2. We have an equation for that. And all you have to do is solve for your concentration. And you're going to take uh, your half, or 0 0.5, raise it to n, so the number of half-lives, and then you're just going to multiply that by your initial concentration. So let's try an example here. Um, so the question is, what percentage of reactant will remain after five half-lives have passed? What percentage of reactant will remain after five half-lives have passed? Pause the video, try it. What percentage of reactant will remain after five half-lives have passed? So what we're going to do is use the equation we were looking at before. So we have our original concentration is going to be times uh, 0 0.5 or 1 half raised to n. So in this question, we are going to say that five half-lives have passed. So n is equal to five. Um, so now what we're going to do is just plug it into this equation. A is equal to 0 0.5 raised to five because five have five half-lives have passed, then we're going to put our original concentration in. So personally, when I approach these problems, if I ever see the word percentage, I immediately assume that my original concentration is 100. Because then whatever answer I get here for my concentration, that's already in a percentage and I don't have to do any extra math. So here we're going to go 0.5 raised to the fifth, and then we're going to multiply that by 100. If you use your math correctly, or do your math correctly, I should say, you're going to end up with 3.1 
one, two, five molar or whatever it is we're talking about. And since we're talking about concentration, it's usually going to be molarity. But since the question is actually asking for percentage, we can just jump right there and see that our answer is 3.125%. So pretty straightforward there. All right. So now, what we're going to do is take what we've learned about half-life and we're going to substitute it into the integrated rate laws. So we just said at our first half-life, we know that we have lost 50% of our original concentration. So we can go into our integrated rate law, find anywhere where, where we have a final concentration, and we can substitute it in for one half a naught. Or, in other words, an easier way to think about it is original concentration divided by two. So we're going to take this term and we're going to substitute it right into our integrated rate law. And so what we can do is see this whole thing summarized down here. And I already see a typo. Get rid of that. No. Okay. So what we have is our um, chart that you've seen before. We've got our zero order, first order, and second order. After that, we have our integrated rate laws. And just like I said, all we're doing is taking this term right here and we're substituting it into this part, which actually gives us the overall equations in this line. So we have one half of our original concentration is equal to our original concentration minus KT times our half-life right there. And so if we do a little bit of algebra, it brings us down to this bottom line, which is the most important line. And what we see here is our original concentration divided by 2K is equal to our half-life. So we are always talking about this in the terms of chemical reactions. So we have a reactant going into a product. So that means that our concentration of our reactant is always going to be decreasing. So what we're going to see is if this decreases, so if our concentration, our original concentration decreases, which it will in a chemical reaction, we would also expect to see our half-life decrease. So for zero order, we're going to see a decrease in our half-life. So that means if our first half-life is a minute, our second half-life is going to be 30 seconds. After that, it would be 15 seconds, and so on and so forth. So it gets shorter and shorter and shorter as the concentration decreases. Now let's look at first order. So again, for first order, what we did is we took our initial concentration divided by 2 and substituted that in for our final concentration. When we do some algebra, we can come down here and solve for our half-life. And again, what we have is our natural log of 2 natural log of two or 0.693, whatever you want to do. And you're going to divide that by K. Um, so that's going to be equal to your half-life. Now, what we can see here is that our concentration, so our concentration is not in our half-life expression at all. So our half-life here is just going to be constant. That's all we would want to say about this. Okay, it's half-life, or it's half-life, it's constant. It's not going to change no matter what's going on with our concentration um, of our reactant. Now for second order, again what we did is took our one half a naught, our original concentration, and substitute that into this term right here. When we do some algebra, we come down here to the bottom and we end up with another half-life expression. Now this is basically the opposite type of relationship than we see with zero order. So here, when we see our decrease in our original concentration of our reactant, what that means is we actually are going to see an increase in our half-life. So for second order, we see an increase of a half-life. So if our um, first half-life is a minute, our second half-life is going to be two minutes, then four minutes, then eight minutes, and then so on and so forth. So if you're not a math person, what we have here for you are a bunch of different graphs where we're trying to do this for you visually, basically, or plot it out for you visually. So I don't want you to get overwhelmed by this because there's a lot of different information on this page. So we're going to go back a couple episodes to when I first plotted out the concentration of A versus the time. So when, when we had something that was zero order, we saw this basic plot. Remember, I just kind of drew it like this for you, and then it was flat on the ground. Pretend that's better, okay? So it's completely flat right here, perfectly, and then it's flat down there. All right, so what we're gonna do is have an original concentration here, of 0.2 molar. And then what we're gonna do is try to figure out how long it takes us for us to lose about 50% of our concentration. So we're gonna go from 0.2 down to 0.1, and that brings us to this point right here. So the time it takes for us to lose 50% of our concentration is about 12 seconds right there. So our first half-life is 12 seconds. But then, once we're at 0.1, or a concentration of 0.1, our next half-life occurs in a much shorter period of time. 
Okay, so if this first one was 12 seconds, our second half-life was closer to six seconds, and then so on and so forth. And so here you can see it visually, but again, for my math people, as our concentration goes down, we would expect for our half-life to go down. So the amount of time it takes for us to go from one concentration to half that is going to be shorter and shorter and shorter. So it's easier to go through the decay. So now let's look at first order. Okay, first order, here's your plot. Again, don't get overwhelmed by all the data. All we're doing is plotting our concentration versus time down here. And when I drew it for you a couple episodes, I kind of did it like that. And so we had an exponential decay, but it wasn't as extreme as second order, remember? Okay, so we're starting off here with a concentration, an initial concentration equal to one molar. So then what we're gonna do is figure out how long it takes for us to go here to about 50%, okay, or exactly 50%. And in this example, let's assume our x-axis is second, that's fine. So our very first half-life was exactly one second. Now we have to figure out how much time it's gonna take for us to go from 0.5 to 0.25, okay, right here, another half-life. Again, one second, and then again, one second, one second, one second. And so what you can see here in our equation is that our half-life has not been affected at all by the concentration. So our half-life here is constant, okay? All right, so now let's look at second order. Second order is like this, okay? And shout out to Dr. Anderson for trying to get me a good plot for this, I really appreciate it. Um, so here we have second order with a more extreme version of that curve, okay? It dips a little bit lower. Um, so here again, we're plotting our concentration versus time. And what we see here is if we have an original concentration, I'm just gonna make up some numbers, this is 100 right here. What we're gonna see is we go down to this point right there, we are now at 50% of the concentration, so now that's gonna be equal to 50. So what we see here is if this first, um, first half life is, I'm just gonna make up a number, 10, what we can see is when we go from 50 then down to about 25 here, our second half life at this point is gonna be 20. Then our third half life is going to be 40 and so on and so forth. And so we can, we can see this with our math as our original concentration decreases, the amount of time it takes for us to lose 50% of our next set of our species is going to increase. So zero order, the half lives get shorter and shorter and shorter. First order, doesn't matter, the half-life is constant. Second order, our half-life gets greater and greater, or longer and longer and longer, okay? All of this has been summarized for you right here in this beautiful chart. So we have a couple different pieces of information here. We've got our rate laws, which by this point you should be experts at. The integrated rate law, if you don't have that memorized by now, you need to do so today, get those down. And then now we've added our half-life equation. So you can see the relationship between our original concentration and our half-life. Okay, this is something you've just got to have memorized. So with that, I'm going to leave you with one last question here. And so here's, your, here's what we got. Uh, compounds A and B react to form C and D in a reaction that was found to be second order overall and second order in A. The rate constant at 30 degrees Celsius is 0.622 inverse molar inverse minutes. What is the half-life of A when 0.041 molar of A is mixed with excess B? So I want you to actually solve for the half-life, but challenge to that would be write out your rate law given the information in the question. Okay, go ahead and try this one. Okay, the first thing that I want you to do is write out your chemical equation. So compound A and B react to form C plus D, easy, okay? Second thing, now we're gonna write out our rate law. So rate is going to be equal to K, our rate constant, which was given to us to be 0 0.622 inverse molar times minute, and we're going to then multiply that by what? So that's what our second line tells us. So it's found to be second order overall and second order in A. So we know we're gonna take our concentration of A 
and raise it to the second power. Since it's second order overall, that also tells us that if we were to put b in the equation, we would need to give it a zero order. So two plus zero gives me second or order overall, and then obviously this has to be two because we're looking at a. All right, so zero order, there we go. Okay, so that's our rate law, but technically we don't actually need this for the problem because we're trying to figure out what our half-life of a is. And so what we have to do is understand the fact that we're looking at a second order equation or a second order situation. And because of that, we're going to have to use our second order half law. So we've got half law, half life equation. I keep saying that. So half life is going to be equal to one divided by your rate constant times your initial concentration of A. So we're just going to plug some values in here. Your rate constant, like we said before, is 0 0.622, and that's going to be an inverse molar times minute. And then you're going to multiply it times your initial concentration, which was given to us as 0 0.0410 molar. If you plug that into your calculator correctly, you should get something like 39.21 minutes. Okay, so hopefully you got that right. If not, stop for a second, see where you made a mistake. Um, these problems aren't usually very tricky because we have to tell you what order it is somehow, either through the units, which you could have figured out it was second order from right there, from the unit of your rate constant, or we straight up tell you that it's second order, or we give you a rate law. But once you know it's second order, all you have to do is go back to that chart I showed you on the previous slide. You could then pull the data right off of your um, of the chart so you know which formula you need to use. And then from there, you can just solve for your half-life. Okay? That's all I got for this episode. It's a quick and easy one. Um, have fun doing your learning exercise.